Welcome to Impact for Life. Thanks so much for joining us. You know, today in today's program, we're going to look at the word shaken. Shaken is throughout the Bible. The Bible says, and of course God says, anything that can be shaken will be shaken. In other words, it doesn't stand. But when we have our lives built upon the rock, the rock of Christ, of course, we do stand. In fact, the Bible says we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And we see the world being shaken in many ways, shaken economically, shaken health-wise, shaken in all kinds of manners. And shaken, no two ways about it, can bring ruination, but also shaking can produce revival. Shaking, of course, precedes the return of Christ. We're gonna look at these three things, and I hope and pray that as we look at this message today, you're not shaken from the point of view of, of being, wow, what's happening? But you'll be shaken to the point of view of thinking, wow, God is so good. You know, I want to be shaken with the power of God, with the anointing of God, with the promises of God. Shaken to be awake to what Christ is doing upon the earth today. And so I hope and pray that as you look at this program, that you too are so blessed that you're shaken in a good way. Amazing days. Who would have thought that you'd have time to get all those odd jobs done around the home before Christmas comes? But seriously, I know it's troubling times for many, and the world is definitely going through shaking times. I watch a lot of news feeds around the world, and as Christians, to be honest, we should not be caught by surprise. Jesus himself uh, prophesied about earthquakes, famines, wars, pestilence. They were all foretold by him. And so before I get to what I want to talk about today, the shaking, let me say to you, as Peter did on the day of Pentecost, because not only does he quote from Joel, but also from David, uh, from David in the Psalms. And uh, I want to read Acts chapter 2, verse 25. Therefore, my heart rejoiced and my tongue was glad. Moreover, my flesh also will rest in hope. For you will not leave my soul in Hades, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in your presence. Wow, what a great scripture it is for us this morning. Shaken. You know and I know, I don't think the world has been shaken like this before. I know there's been wars and there's been pestilence, but for the whole world to shut down and to close down, never before, I don't think this has happened on a global scale. But you and I are called to know the peace of God that passes all human understanding. The good book tells us, right? And Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. My peace I give unto you. You know, even the most favorite of Psalms, Psalm 23. Though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So you and I, Christian, my brother and sister in Christ, and any person out there who believes on Jesus, hallelujah, has nothing to fear. I know that many around the world are troubled now, they're concerned now, and many are in fear because obviously the media hype, and you know, as I know, as you know, the media often doesn't just report the news, they all uh, wanna give their opinion on the news, and you know, they're out there doing their thing, but enough to say, you know, they can create a lot of fear and panic. And even some of the things that the government's saying, that tens of thousands could die and, and all this, and it can create panic and fear in people. But as believers, we are not to be in fear, we're to be in faith. We're not to be in panic, we're to be in peace. Amen. So in quoting Joel, Peter goes on in Acts 2, in quoting Joel, he goes on to verse 21, and it came to pass that whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. You know, you may be listening to me this morning and you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You can call upon him and the Bible says, whoever, whoever you are, you can call upon him and you shall be saved. So I want to encourage the church as I did this morning with over texting, just inviting people, go fishing, whether it be email, a phone call or what, because Jesus said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. And so my thought was for the year, if we're not fishing, we're not following. Now, I, when I obviously gave that at the beginning of the year, never knew that we'd be fishing on a different kind of line or net or whatever way, you different kind of boat, to be honest, uh, than what we were doing and gathering together in the sanctuary and so forth and inviting people there. And so we have got a different scenario using a different vessel, but we can still go fishing. But I think church, you know, with the world right now, with all the shaking, I think they could either be facing 
ruin, revival, or the return of Jesus. Three R's. Ruin, revival, or the return of Jesus. What R are you praying for and what R am I hoping for? Amen. I'm obviously not hoping and praying for the first one. But, you know, these we hear are unprecedented times. So are we facing ruin? Are we facing revival? Are we facing the return of Christ? And if not now, if not now, we know the book says it will happen sooner or later. It is all about the future. Amen. It's even with this, it's not so much where we began, it's where we're going to finish. And it's all foretold in the book. Read the book. I've read the book from cover to cover. I know what's going to happen, and I'm sure you know what's going to happen. It's not written there to scare us. It's written there to give us a future and a hope. So let me just talk very briefly about the first R. I don't want to focus on this first R, because let's be honest, it's probably not the best one. But the first R, ruin. Hebrews uh, 12. Verse 25, see that you do not refuse him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on the earth, how much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven? Verse 26, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he has promised saying, yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. Now this, yet once more indicates removals of things that are being shaken. As, if, as of those things that are being made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. We have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Hallelujah. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear, for our God is a consuming fire. God says, I'm going to shake the earth. I'm going to shake the heaven, that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. But that Hallelujah, the kingdom of God, oh, I want to tell you right now, remains. It cannot be shaken into ruin. Amen. And so, as I said, I don't want to comment too much on the first hour, ruin, but I think all of us would understand that the world will be definitely, and a lot of people will be facing financial ruin after this. Uh, for how nations will come back from printing money and, and uh, you know, creating trillions in the, in the United States. And I've been in contact with a lot of pastors over there, as you know, over $2 trillion, our own government, big bailouts. I think of the tourist industry. I think of the restaurant industry. I think of many people. Uh, you know, obviously, there is at that time, that first hour. Uh, but I don't want to focus too much on it. But enough to say, concerning the first hour, can I just encourage Christians right now. Can I encourage you, church? Because 1 Thessalonians 3, 2 says, And I sent Timothy, our beloved minister of, our brother and minister of God, and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ, to establish you and encourage you concerning your faith. Listen, listen, concerning your faith. That no one should be shaken by these afflictions, by these afflictions, trials, ruination. You know, as I said, there will be people who face ruin, but you and I should not be shaken. For you yourselves know that we are appointed for times such as this. Hallelujah. We are appointed to this. For in fact, we told you before, when we were with you, that we would suffer tribulations just as it happened. And as you know, exactly what I'm talking about. God foretold this. God foreknew it. And so you and I, hallelujah, we're in the ark, we're in the church. Praise the Lord. And so the first are ruin. Second are when shaking a cause uh, uh, comes, I know it can cause ruin, but it can also cause revival. Revival. Let's have a look in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. We know in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, that I was talking before, a mighty rushing wind came. Hallelujah. And the place was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. But in Acts 4, 29, now Lord... Look on these threats, on their threats, and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. Listen now, verse 31. And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled. You know, I could just get Bev to shake the camera right now, like, you know, that would really kind of get me going, but they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. Acts 16, 25. But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, 
and immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. And so, yes, we have shaking causing ruination. I understand that. But we also have shaking causing revival. It ends up in that chapter with the jailer saying to Paul, what must I do to be saved? I believe that people are going to be asking you, asking me, what must I do to be saved? As even, I mean, we're only three days into this lockdown. Can you imagine after a week, after two weeks, after three weeks, four weeks, can you imagine if it, if it rains and people can't go outside? I mean, people are going to get a little stir crazy. And I believe that you and I are appointed for such a time as this. We can come into their homes over this live stream, give them hope, give them encouragement. You know, it goes on to say in that chapter, it goes on to say great grace was upon them and not one of them lacked. Great grace was upon them and not one of them lacked. We need to look out for one another, help one another, pray for one another, do what we can to support one another. Revival, I'm believing for it. Shaking produces revival. You know, I've been fishing like most Kiwis a lot of times. And uh, you know, when you go fishing and you don't catch anything, it's just so boring for me. It's so boring. But enough to say when you're pulling in the fish, one after another, it's just lots of fun. You know, I know that some people are built for this and others, uh, you know, a little shyer in relation to speaking to people. But online technology, it's not hard to text. It's not hard to email. I mean, you know, let's be honest, just, you know, let's just call out. Obviously, we've got some people in the church who are just so good at reaching out to people and, 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 and asking people to come. Now, obviously, we can't ask them physically to come to the building at the moment. But of course, in a few weeks, I believe we can. But I want us to watch this testimony about fishing from Steph. When God touches your heart in such a profound way, like I knew God all my life, but when I nearly died after having Libby, I had such a revelation of God's goodness that you can't help but share God with everyone and just as you live your life. Our motivation as Christians, our drive should be that we should share Jesus because it's a real scary thing out there to think that there's so many people living their lives that don't know him, they don't, they don't know he's their answer but also they don't know about eternity. That's huge for me. I love just going out and looking for opportunities, saying that sometimes I don't feel like it either. And so that's, you've got to, we've got to always be mindful that it's never often a convenient moment when it's a God moment, right? So I remember walking on the beach and I think I was having kind of a hard day and I was telling God about it. And I saw this family ahead of me and they had a little boy. I really felt the Holy Spirit say, talk to them, say hi, invite them to music box. I'm thinking, all right, you know how you just could easily walk by? Just, it's not embarrassing. You've got to actually, sometimes break through that feeling in your heart that you don't want to share Jesus because you think, oh, they might think I'm weird or why would you do that? You know, why would you invite someone to church? So I just started talking to them and asked them who they are and found out they'd just come from England a few days earlier and got chatting and I just sort of said, hey, look, you know, I'm new in the area, but we have, at my church, we have this really cool thing you can bring them along to if you're looking for something and um, music box and, um, and she said, yeah, I'd like to do that. Next thing, came and got saved at our church and is about to do Gateway, comes to our mums and bubs, and um, just having had the opportunity just to um, be able to share Jesus with her has probably changed her whole family, and I love that. I always actually am quite surprised when people say you're an evangelist because I don't really feel like I am. I feel like I'm just someone that loves God and lives my life for Him, and He's our ultimate leader and example, and if we're following Him, we all need to share the good news. So if it's not quite your thing to reach out to people, just look at what, how your life looks to others. When we're in the world, are we standing out as Christians? Are we making choices that show that we love God? When someone's sick, are we going the extra mile? Are we following the Holy Spirit's little check on our heart? Like, talk to that person, um, buy that meal. I love that. And I think if you live like that, you actually have a really cool life. It's so amazing what God does. And I just love that um, I don't know what each day is going to bring and who I'm going to meet. And, as Pastor Peter says to us, we've all got to live our lives as fishers of men because that's what we're called to do. It's what the Bible says and that's what our hearts are motivated to do when we love God. This is our mission field right here, right where we live, our neighbours, our friends, sharing him with others, that it's making a difference for their eternity. And so that's my motivation. Well, what amazing testimony, Steph. Uh, that is just so cool. 
you know, no two ways about it. Steph's out there fishing and, and I know that she'll be fishing in various ways right now. And uh, William Booth said this, he is a founder of the Savior, Salvation Army. He said, some of my best generals are women. And uh, I just wanna say thank you so much. You know, we're talking about shaking. We're talking about the three R's, ruin, Yes, shaking can cause ruin, no two ways about that. We saw that in the scriptures. Ru shaking can always also cause revival. We just saw that. And uh, people are being shaken today and it can cause them to come to Christ. The third R I would just wanna mention about is the return of Christ. The disciples came to Jesus when he was and asked him, when are you going to establish your kingdom? A lot of people want to know, when are you coming back, Lord? You know, no man knows the hour of the day. Jesus said that, but in Matthew 24, he gives us all the signs and the seasons, right? And in verse 27, he says in Matthew 24, For as the lightning comes from the east to the west and flashes to the west, so shall be the coming of the Son of Man. And so no two ways about it, we'll all know when he comes. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light, the stars will fall from heaven, the powers of heaven will be shaken. Are we getting that word? Shaking, yes, in relation to ruination. Shaking, yes, in relation to revival. When the place was shaken, what must I do to be saved? And now, in the coming of the Lord, the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with great power and great glory. He will send his angels with a great sound, a great a sound of a trumpet. They will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of the heaven to the other. Aren't you glad you're in that lot? Now learn the parable from the fig tree, the nation of Israel. When its branch has already become tender and put forth its leaves, when you know that, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near, at the door even. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word, said Jesus, will by no means pass away. But of that day, day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father only. But, says Jesus, listen now, as it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be in the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days of the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. He was locked down in the ark. Just listen now. They were eating and drinking and then in the ark. Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour the Lord is coming. Therefore, you also be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. I just want to read two more scriptures. Mark 13, verse 24. I never apologize. I always uh, kind of do in a roundabout way just in relation to the amount of scriptures I read. But I just take great hope from the scriptures. Not so much, you know, I could tell a lot of stories, but it's not about stories. It's not about, you know, me just speaking. It's about what the Word of God says. And so I like to read lots of scriptures when I'm preaching. If you're new uh, to City Impact Church and new to me preaching, I read the scriptures. It's the word of God that keeps us alive. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So bear with us. Mark 13, verse 24. But in those days after the tribulation, <laughs> the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light, the stars of heaven will fall, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in, in the clouds with great power and glory. So shaking, yes, hallelujah, heralds in, the return of Christ, 2 Thessalonians 2.1. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering together to Him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if by us or by internet or by online, as if from us, as though the day of the Lord has come. It hasn't come yet. Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And, this, and the man of sin, the Antichrist, has revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself, whether it's a one world government, whatever. I'm not here to talk about that so much today, but the Antichrist exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. So he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. And so here, it says here, hey, things are going to be shaken. 
Things are going to be shaken, it will cause ruination. Things are going to be shaken, it will cause revival. And when Jesus comes, there will be a shaking. So uh, shaking accompanies these three R's. The ultimate R, of course, is the return of Christ. You know, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We prayed that. A place where there's no more sickness, no more death, no more viruses, no more being locked up. Uh, you know, a paradise. Think about it. So my encouragement to you today is to be watchful, to be in prayer, to be ready. You know, we've got four weeks, maybe 12, some are saying. I don't know. I'm hoping for less time, but enough to say it's a time to pray. And so, Father, I pray blessing over every person gathered here under the sound of my voice. I bless their households. I bless them, Lord, that fear would not enter their household, but faith would arise. Lord, that had provisions from heaven. We look to you as Jehovah Jireh. I speak health over the people. I speak prosperity over the people. I speak peace over the people. Lord, we just rebuke the devil, that one that comes to rob, kill and destroy. Psalm 91 says, this will not come near us. We apply the blood of Christ afresh over our lives today. We thank you, O oh God, that we will not be shaken. You've given us the book. We know what's in it, Lord. We know what's coming on the earth. And if this is a precursor, a pre-run or whatever, or whatever, Lord, we are ready. We look to you, O oh God. We're watchful. We're people, O oh God, who will be in prayer, in the word, O oh God, and going about our daily business. And so, O oh God, I pray blessing over the people of God. That, Lord, until we meet again, that you'd prosper them and bless them and keep them in the hollow of your hand. Amen. Well, isn't it great to hear that God is in control? He's on the throne. He rules and reigns. And we have a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Oh, I encourage you to build your life upon Christ. You know, when everything else fails, He never fails. He has said in His word, I'll never leave you nor will I forsake you. He said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. You know, in order to go to heaven, Jesus said, unless you're born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. What is it to be born again? Well, it means to have your spirit renewed. It means to invite Christ into your heart simply by saying a prayer along the lines of, dear Jesus, would you come into my heart? Would you forgive me my sin? I thank you, Lord, that you died for me. You gave your life for me and I now give you my life. You know, by saying a prayer like that, you get your name written in the book of heaven. It's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Joy fills your heart. Your sin is washed away. Why don't you pick up the Bible, God's word to you and God's word for you, and begin reading about the promises that God has said. You know, when you build your life upon the rock, even though storms come, you won't be swept away. Find a great church, whether it be a church online or whether it be in a physical location, but find a great church and become part of it. I pray and I know that as you walk with God and talk with God, God will impact your life. Yeah. 
We are sons, we are daughters, we are mates, we are generations. Here you'll feel welcome no matter who you are and meet real people, people just like you. We are adventure seekers, we are risk takers. We're co-workers, we're hard workers and we are hard cases. We are mountain climbers, we are mountain movers, we are game players and we are game changers. We're glass half fullers. We're future thinkers and we're coffee drinkers. We are sweet hearts and we are sweet tooths. We are housekeepers and caretakers of our place and yours if you need it. Here at City Impact, it's fun, it's rowdy, it's honest and it's exciting. And you're invited to come and be a part of it. Thanks for watching Impact for Life. If you enjoyed the program, I'd love you to click on the subscribe button below.